but I have an assortment, so here we are, assorted. It just looks more sexy that way. I'm doing a lot right now. You don't need to do all this, but you know, you watching, you learning, you know what I'm saying? Dramatic, fluffed out, soft, smoky eye looking like situation. <laughs> this does have fallout. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we're gonna bring this together. <laughs> Whoa, where am I going with this makeup, right? Let's do a good old school eyeshadow one-on-one -on -one tutorial because it's been a long time since I myself have seen one on YouTube, so I wanted to provide one for you in case you are a beginner or you just want a little touch up on the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you follow me on all socials and also comment below and let me know what your status level is when it comes to eyeshadows. You know, how comfortable are you? What looks do you normally do? Because I'm curious. Just in case you're curious and distracted, the lippy that I have on is the Lip Bar Savage on the outside. On the inside, I have on Maybelline Super Matte Ink, and this is the shade 395. It's called Birthday Bestie. And then in the middle middle, which is all blended in, I love a good ombre lip. This is Give Beauty I'm Still Here Camo Liquid Lipstick. Is that the whole name? I'm Still Here Camo? Yeah, that. Now, I'm an old school MAC girl, okay? I used to freelance at MAC, and I'm so used to the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. But the one I have is Wicked Old. And I was in a Morphe store the other day and I just grabbed the P. Louise base. These were all the rave back in the day. Like when I say back in the day, just years ago on IG, and maybe even still now, the P. Louise bases were clutch. This is Rumor 02. They were sold in London and it took ages for it to come. And now it's sold here in the US, so just awesome. Ooh, okay, the first goop of it is oily and that's just because it's been sitting. I'll use my finger, okay? This I remember to be extremely pigmented, so I'm gonna blend what's on the back of my hand. It is very light pink. I took from the area where I first took the product and then I'm trying to blot. To get as little product as possible, what I'm trying to do is just to be in more control of the product. If you went right in on the lid with so much, it can be really, really messy, okay? So with the finger, it's great to apply to the eyelid and then let it air dry. Regardless, it's going to air dry because I'm gonna prime my other eyelid and it's just gonna dry. You know what I'm saying? This does look like the painterly paint pot I used to do. Let's get the other eyelid primed, okay? Now, if you see, I took the eyelid primer into my crease area, but not so much. No need to bring this up into the eyebrow. Clearly, I've already been doing my face and the eyes are the last part, but I brought it up into the crease area, not necessarily the eyebrow. Okay, so let's get started now. It's not gonna look perfect, but really wanna make sure that the primer is more so on the eyelid. Let's get into that, okay? The eyeshadow palette that I'm gonna be using is this Huda Beauty Empowered eyeshadow palette and I do like it. I know that it's pricey. It's got some nice colors in it. So let's just jump into that. I got some new brushes when I went to Morphe. So let's bust a few of these out. I'm gonna use the Morphe brushes, but let's first start off with this one and I'm gonna explain to you all that. If you want a simpler brush bundle, look at my Amazon brush video. I'll link it below for you. And that's literally one brush bundle that you can use for your whole entire face. But I have an assortment, so here we are, assorted. This is the shade Legacy. Taking some product and then tapping off the excess, I always do that, and that's key so you don't make a mess, okay? And then I'm putting the eyeshadow right here in the crease. This is a transition area, and I'm transitioning from the eyeshadow base to the actual concealer. And now I'm patting it in. So at first I was using wiper motions to actually apply it, and now I want to pat to further diffuse the shade into the brow bone highlight. And to identify where your crease is, raise your brows, and right here, Take the back of your brush and you can poke right inside where the eyeball is. This is your crease area, okay? And let's do the same on this side. I like to start right here toward the outer part, wiping it left to right, and then I come in. I like for my transition color to meet the front of my eyebrows. I don't like for there to be a space between the transition and the brows. It just looks strange. So the only space that I like is for it to start right here and go outward. But right here in the front, I like for it to all blend together. It just looks more sexy that way. Now, you may notice that I have closed off my eyelids and it makes it look like my eyelids are a lot smaller than they actually are. We're gonna fix all of that, you watch. I like to feather the eyeshadow into this area 
just so that there are no harsh lines. Okay, so that's a reddish brown color, right? And I love a good reddish brown shade in my crease. Now let's deepen this up. In this same palette, this is the Morphe M573 brush. I'm taking the color Confident, starting right here in the middle. Always tap off the excess, and now we're blending. I like to go toward the outer part of the eye first, and we're further deepening and isolating out the crease. And with eyeshadow blending, you really just have to have the time, honestly. The bigger the brush, the faster you can move because the more ground you can cover so this brush is really good the, the shape of it is really good to get right up in here but really and truly now that I'm already in here I could take a bigger brush to feather it more because really the blending again is really key I want it to look feathered and blended not harsh well let's do this side we're gonna fix everything up a little bit and it's gonna take time to build it up of course you can not tap off the excess and go right onto the eyes but my face is done so I can't chance it I just always tap any possible excess although this palette barely has fallout so I do want to notate that I'm getting this right into the crease again the crease area poke your brush and isolate where your eyeball and your brow bone meet that is your crease area so you see how different this is looking already comment let me know if this is looking good okay so I want to cover some more ground I'm taking the Sigma brush this is the E61 brush and I'm going to go right up in here again I just want it to be bigger fluffier more feathered out out. And then remember, I don't like there to be a gap right here in the front. Deepening that, it's gonna look so good. Same on this side. And this crease can be as deep or light as you prefer it to be. But the deeper it is, the more dramatic the look is. And now I'm lightly, lightly blending. Now, if you can tell, we can barely see that reddish brown color, which was called Legacy. So we can take a different brush and add some more to the transition because right now we're gonna transition from the brow bone to the crease color because the crease color has taken over. So this is a different brush. I could use any of the other ones, but I'm just gonna take a different one right now. M441 and right here in between the two, I'm applying this legacy color to warm it up some more. And I'm going lightly and I'm gonna feather this too because this got harsh right here. Lightly feathering and it took away some of the brown. I'm doing a lot right now. You don't need to do all this, but you know, you watching, you learning. You what I'm saying? Right up in here to warm that up to give it a transition. You feel me? I like for it to look like an ombre sunset. This side came out way better than the other side. Okay, let me get some more of this brown and try and fix this side up a little bit. Hang on. This is obviously a dramatic eye, especially since I brought the crease so far out. You don't need to do all that, but it's going to end up being very dramatic because I'm going to bring these crease colors down under my eye and then we're gonna highlight the eyelid. So now with this Sephora Pro Shadow Brush number 14, I'm taking Legacy, the reddish brown color, and I'm going under my eyes to apply it because I like for it all to be connected, symmetric, the whole nine yards. Squinting the eyes, and this is a slanted, fluffy brush, and I'm connecting it right back here. So we have the reddish brown down, and then we're going to apply the brown color confident. Applying it, and then we are just fluffing it from side to side. And you can fluff this as tightly as you want, so not so wide, or you can make it very dramatic and wide, like how I'm doing it. Wide meaning bringing it all the way up here. It doesn't always have to go that way, but I like for it that to be like that. You know, I like my makeup to be bold and dramatic. You may or may not prefer that, but certainly bringing the crease colors under the eyes makes a world of a difference for sure. Okay, so there's that reddish brown color and now confident, same brush, always tapping off the excess. I like to start in the middle and let's go into the front, get some more product and now let's bring this back. So when we bring it back, we're connecting to the crease color that ended up coming down over here, right? And then lightly fluffing. This is just a very dramatic, fluffed out, soft, smoky eye looking like situation. <laughs> but we're not gonna make it a smoky eye because I'm going to highlight the eyelid, you'll see. Okay, now for the eyelid, I want it to be light and honestly, it's gonna end up matching my lip or complementing my lip very beautifully. I'm gonna be sticking in between power, get it, best self, and legacy, okay? And I'll tell you which ones I'm choosing. First, we're gonna start off light. Taking best self, this is a Sigma E28 brush. And I like how it's a flat, fluffy brush, because I don't need this to be a harsh cut crease, but I certainly do want it to be flat to apply this eyeshadow 
easier so here's best self now now that i see best self on me i could have certainly gone lighter with power but this is still okay and we're gonna build this up this does have fallout <laughs> and we're gonna build this up into the crease area open it up dang best self is more peach and i wanted more pink i should have used get it oh my god okay we're gonna bring this together <laughs> you know me we're gonna bring stuff together okay my 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 so i'm using windshield wiper motion starting off right here and then of course isolating out that crease because this eyeshadow is going right up into the crease and that's how we're opening up the eye do you see how my eyelid just looks bigger even with my eye open and we don't need to go all the way over to the side of the eye because we're gonna bring it all in with more crease colors because again i just like for it all to blend very nicely and then another key to open up the eye is to take that lid color, so this is best self, and bring it right here into the inner corner. It makes a huge difference in opening up the eye. Do you see that? This is this is advanced, I'll tell you. I do this and I don't mind, but if you're just trying to do a day-to-day -day look, you might feel like, whoa, where am I going with this makeup, right? So you don't have to bring it down here if you don't want to, but definitely, honey, when you're going out, you're doing something big, baby, go ahead and bring that lid color right over here. You're gonna see a world of a difference for sure. So now it's looking like a cut crease, <laughs> a soft cut crease, right? And that was really the intention. We're gonna blend in that crease a little bit more because right now the crease is giving a lot of confidence, that brown plum color, and I want it to be more of an ombre. And now for some more blending, I'm using Legacy again, that reddish brown color. This is the Morphe E573 brush. And I'm just gonna go right here for right now in the outer V, right over the faux cut crease or the soft cut crease, just to soften it a little Little bit warm it up but you see how warming up that outer v makes a difference compared to this side a little bit more bringing it in a little bit and i'm lightly feathering this and now that we've done that i'm going to go with confident lightly feathering that more toward the outer v so again we have the ombre we've got that peach color the reddish brown and the dark brown so we're gonna keep this more on the outside. And then I learned something new from Huda's page that these cream colors can of course be used as eyeshadow bases, but then also can be used as an eyeliner. So I'm gonna use this color Purpose, which is a black gel. Ooh, interesting. Taking the color Purpose, this is the Sephora 20 brush. It's got the flat liner and the spoolie on the back. It's like a brow brush, but I'm using it for my eyeliner. And this can definitely be a smudged liner as well. See how I do that? I'm turning it and angling it inward. And now I'm just going to go over it in an effort to smudge this a little bit. Now, you know, I love a good inner eye highlight. This is the Milk Makeup Color Chalk. And I first am using the color Kickball, but I want to lighten it up a little bit with this silvery gold, more like a champagne. This is the shade Hopscotch. So first I did Kickball, and this is the Sephora Pro Crease 24 brush. Way too small for a crease, at least on my face. So I love to use this to apply my inner eye highlight. So I'm going over with Hopscotch to lighten a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, KK, here we are with the up close and personal eyeshadow look. Of course, I've done my eyelashes. All links are below. You know the lashes that I always use, D22 from AliExpress, and I'll link the hair and the rope in case you're into it or whatever, but hopefully the video helps you. I'll leave two videos for you to pick from to watch next, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.